Good evening, Dell fans, and welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada. We're here on the sunset of day two of three days of live coverage here on theCUBE. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by my fabulous co-host and CUBE founder, Dave Vellante. Dave, you've really brought some brilliant questions today. Thank you so much. Yeah. You know, I feel like things like multi-cloud get lost in the AI shuffle, but customers are still dealing. I mean, it still with matters. Lots of different clouds. In fact, I think <laughs> AI makes it even more multi-cloud. Right? I, I would agree with you there, actually 100%. We've got, there's a lot of things happening in the cloud, there's things happening on-prem. We've got the right people to talk about it this evening. David Singer, thank you so much for being here. Great to be here. And Varun Chabra, thank you for being here as well. As we get settled, how has the week been for you? This is such a moment. Varun, you're smiling, I'm going to you first. Uh, no, it's been great. It's been really amazing. The two keynotes, uh, they've wrapped. The, the, the feedback that we've been getting has been really, really awesome. Um, it, you know, we still got a little bit of the event to go, but so far really, really happy with what, what uh, the reception's been like. Absolutely, for you as well? I mean, a lot of energy, the discussions with the customers and the partners are great, and the, the, the reception that we're getting is fantastic. fantastic. Yeah, everybody loves you right now. <laughs> that must feel really good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I believe it. It's a privilege, it. yeah. Not everybody. Some of the competitors are not too happy with you. <laughs> I was more referring to their customers yeah. there. Right. Well, happy to oblige them. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What do you, what are, so we're talking, we're talking multi-cloud, we're talking Apex. Let's actually break it down like you were just talking about. When it comes to multi-cloud, what are some of the challenges enterprise is facing right now? This is obviously mission critical. Yeah, absolutely. So, look, I, I think AI, as you were saying, Dave, it's, it's all over the topic, topic of conversation, but multi-cloud hasn't gone away, right? And, F, and we think actually with AI, it's going to become even more important than ever. Some of the same questions that customers have become more magnified, right? Where do I, what do I do with, what we're hearing with, with AI is like, well, what do I do with my data, right? Where do I run the AI workloads? What's the right mix of, you know, you're starting to hear the word hybrid AI, right? Which is, yep. you may be doing POCs on, um, in the public cloud, you bring them on-prem, or you're running, you're training data in the, you're training your models in the public cloud, do you bring them on-prem? Do you run them in, in, in the public cloud? What's the interplay between them? And, and you know, Apex and what we've been doing with Apex is, is more relevant than ever for that reason. You know, if you, if you just take a step back, the way we think about Apex is really three prongs. First one is, how do we take what customers love about on-prem, right? Our solutions on-prem, our, our storage software-driven solutions, our data protection capabilities, and give them the same mission-critical experience in the public cloud, right? Being able to run the same software for storage on-prem, off-prem, being able to standardize your AI workflows, so you're able to take advantage of those high throughput capabilities that our storage software has, be able to protect that data in the cloud or on-prem. The second leg of this tool is, is actually bringing cloud-like capabilities on-prem, right? So we know customers are standardizing on operating, uh, operating environments for cloud, whether it's Azure, whether it's Red Hat, et cetera, et cetera. We want to help them bring, them, bring that on-prem as well. And then the third one is really when you're, when you're looking at your on-prem infrastructure, how do you get into more of an as-a-service experience and bring that model, modern cloud experience on-prem for your applications, for your workloads, for your IT operators? Right, so you have the relationship with Microsoft. Um, Arc you know, brings yeah. cloud everywhere. Yeah. Red Hat, Red Hat with yeah. OpenShift. Yeah. Right, yeah. I mean that's another, bring it out to the edge, it doesn't matter where it is. Mm -hmm. So Apex is this, changing the definition of cloud. Apex and other like services, changing the definition of cloud. We used to think of it as a bunch of remote services somewhere in the cloud. Now it's cloud, on-prem, edge, a singular experience, ideally. So what's the update there? How's the business going? How's adoption looking? Yeah, I love the word you use there is experience, right? It's the transformational experience of doing business with Dell, right? We started Apex off really early on, changing the experience of how customers consume and procure, right? Last year was all about dipping our toe in the water of how do we change IT operations and drive simplicity with navigators and really simplifying that multi-cloud motion. We also expanded across the entire portfolio as we came, came aboard and we said we are everything now in Apex from PCs all the way through the data center and data protection. Uh, and this year, we take it further. We have a bunch of software releases, over 500 software releases you know, year to date, that really add value to this Apex experience that's coming forward. And we have a 
bunch of great announcements this week as well around Apex for AI Ops, really transforming how customers readjust their IT operations around the multi-cloud and really trying to simplify that for them. Those, those software releases. Uh, I think we're going to ask the same are, question, are they, so go for it, <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us some more about that? Are they, I'm sure many of them just sort of come with the, the package. Some of them are features that I can acquire for pay. How does that break down? Uh, well, some, some of it is expansion of the uh, partner ecosystem that you were touching on. We, we take our best-in-class software-defined endpoints and we move them into the public cloud. There's an Apex block for AWS, or Apex block for Azure, Apex file for et cetera, et cetera, that, you know, down that uh, path. And then we have uh, evolutions of our management and our cloud management capabilities all delivered via SaaS within AIOps. So that's new for us, right? So how do we think about um, observability and AI ops for infrastructure observability and allowing customers to really go deep, understand the health of their environment, it's health of their huge infrastructure. Thing right now, yeah, it's super uh, important. Where are my cyber vulnerabilities and how do you alert me to them and where do you see that there? And then we have AI ops for incident management, which is in these now multi cloud uh, distributed environments, how do you know where your issues are? Where's there an event? Where's there a ticket open? How do I take the noise of that out of that environment and really make it simple for the IT operator to fix issues quickly and actually use AI for AI, <laughs> right, to help you go solve those issues? Yeah. And, and, and yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, adding to the AI ops uh, piece, the AI as it's, that's that's the topic of conversation. So we are enabling a AI not only in AI in Apex through Apex AI ops, but on Apex as well. We're getting a lot of questions about that, so a couple of things we announced at the event was, uh, or have recently announced is, take the uh, Apex Cloud Platform for Red Hat. That's been something that we announced last year. We've been evolving the use cases on that. Red Hat has had a lot of innovation in the AI space with OpenShift AI. We've integrated that into the Apex Cloud Platform for Red Hat, and we're actually, uh, a few weeks ago, announced the ability to run chatbots and uh, you know, uh, digital human interfaces on top of the Apex Cloud Platform for Red Hat. And then with Azure, the number one request we get is how do I bring my Azure experiences on-prem, right? That's, that's great. That's what Apex Cloud Platform for Azure is for. What we've done now is actually announce the availability of being able to run Azure AI APIs on-prem. So customers that are running workloads in Azure, in using Azure AI APIs, right, whether it's vision, document, et cetera, et cetera, they can now run, the developers in our, in our, organiza in our customers' organizations can run the same applications on-prem. They don't have to change their APIs. They're, if they're standardized on Azure already, they can do that. So those are, those are some of the ways that we're enabling AI in the, inside the Apex experience, as David said, and then also on Apex solutions. And my favorite, by the way, is the uh, AI factory, right? AI factories are available as Apex subscriptions That's as right. well. That's right, Ah, okay. And now, wow, that's cool. <laughs> I, I want to ask you about the security model. We were at RSA, uh, I was there, you were uh, doing another show. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a couple weeks Talking ago. about some other interesting tech stuff. And, <laughs> and, yeah, and we did a survey beforehand with our partner at ETR. About 320 uh, RSA attendees and security practitioners. The two most areas they were most interested in learning about at RSA were AI security, no surprise, Shocking. and then multi-cloud security. So to the earlier point, multi-cloud yeah. is, is becoming more of a thing. How are you guys helping customers with multi-cloud security? So I think a lot of that starts with our, our, our message of uh, multi-cloud by design, right? We integrated the security piece into the conversation from the beginning and we architected around security. So whether it's using Navigator to deploy an endpoint in the public cloud, we use um, uh, customers' environments and customers' authentication mechanisms in order to authorize that and provide that. So they're actually not even delegating to Dell, right? They're doing this in the way most SaaS providers do it, is they allow that, the customer to control that. And that is the basis and the foundation of the entire security model in that, in that space. Do customers seem, I mean you get to talk to a lot of different people, do people seem very comfortable with the multi-cloud model for AI? Are they looking to you to tell them what to do? What's the pulse like? I think it's, it's an emerging space. Yeah. And uh, I don't think the answers are so clear. A lot of people are experimenting. What we see the most, uh, questions that we hear the most around is, if you're doing a POC in the cloud or if you're training models in the cloud and you're ready to expand to inferencing production at production, well what do you do? Those are the questions we get. Do we run this on-prem? Um, how do I, and you know, how do I manage the interplay? Another in emerging question which I think is a fascinating one to watch is, how do you, is there going to be some sort of a offload between edge devices and PCs with models running on them 
with some part of the job gets done on these, on these edge devices and then some in the cloud, just to be clear, we don't have an offer for that, but that's a, these are the kind of questions that people are really working through and asking us. So it's a very, very, I think, a, um, a space that there's a lot of dynamism and there's a lot of, a lot of questions. Uh, but what we believe, like our strong point of view is, given that such a large proportion of data is on-premises, we really believe in actually, and, and now increasingly created out at the edge, we believe in bringing AI to the data versus actually trying to move compute to, or trying to move data to where, where compute is. You know, it's interesting you say that. One of your, I won't say who it is because they haven't announced it yet, but one of your partners was showing me here yesterday a rag running on the phone, yes. and he turned off, they put, turned on the airplane mode. He said, watch this. Yeah. And the thing was running at super low latency. Yeah. You know, it was a very yeah. specific yeah. example, but you can see how that, to your point, is going to change the game. I don't have to go to the cloud and spend all that money and, and, yeah. and through APIs. I could just do it on a local device or, or a laptop, or if I need more, you know, a and, server. And how do you orchestrate that at scale, right? And, and, and I mean, if you think about how expensive compute is in data centers and how hard it is to come by, that dynamic is going to be really, really fascinating to watch over time. And even looking at the, at the end user who's experiencing this AI, whether that be internally at a company or, or folks like us just milling around and living their, their daily life, it's got to be real time, it's got to be fast. It's going to have to be, it's going to have to be happening as close to the people or the solution as possible, yes. otherwise it's not going to feel real. Your spot on the latency of response, how fast tokens get generated and what the user experience is, there's still a long way to go and you're right, that, that interplay between cloud and, and the edge is going to play a big role in that. I think that response time is really important, actually, to talk about the LLMs and the, and the chatbots. We actually integrated one into AIOps for observability. We're actually showing it on the floor where within AIOps for infrastructure observability, if you see a, an alert on one of your power stores, you can actually chat with the chatbot and say, why is, it, why is there an alert? And if it gives you the, it'll give you the, the symptoms of what you're seeing and what the issues are, and then you can say, well, how do I remedy it? And it'll actually use a RAG-based model across our entire data set to help users figure out how do they solve their problems. And, yeah. Go ahead, please. No. I was going to say, and you can see where we can go with those kind of capabilities, right? The, the possibilities are endless. We start with um, you know, alerts, et cetera, et cetera, but if you think about things that people have to do over the AI, in the AI data center, AI-enabled data center, energy consumption, uh, you know, uh, security threat analytics, like that's kind, of, that's kind of natural language capability and being able to interact with that is going to be a game changer, we think, for the IT operators in, our, in our, our customers' organizations. So given these endless possibilities, I wanted to ask you about validated designs, because validated designs used to be pretty straightforward. Yeah. I want to do one for SAP, yeah. I'll do one for yeah. VMware, yeah. you know, maybe, yeah. maybe another yeah. one. Yeah. Today, there's a, 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 a buffet yeah. of options, so yeah. what's the update there? How are you choosing where to put your va validated design resource? Because you've got to put resource on it, you've got to put engineering on it, you've got to develop the, the frameworks and publish. Yeah. One, one of the nice things about uh, having so many ad bats in AI that as Dell has had, is that we can learn really, really quickly from our customers about what, what they're looking for. So what I've seen over the last year or so, and you know, David's closer to this from an engineering perspective, is the speed at which we're now able to take what we learn from our customers, the questions we get, and be able to put them into things, not only like validated designs, but even the capabilities that David was talking about with AI ops, uh, you know, the LLM capabilities, et cetera, I've never seen that before. Like it's just really, really energizing. And the, uh, you know, what we've done with Azure AI, uh, Azure AI, for example, actually takes advantage of an AI ops uh, as uh, takes advantage of sorry of a validated design uh, capability. Yeah. And that's kind of based on what we were hearing from customers. What we did with Red Hat, building on top of the ACP again, was also with with digital assistance was also another thing we we heard feedback from. And that's what's driving us. I mean, it's great. It's really, really great. I think maybe one of the other differentiators that we have is the flexibility that's been, been built into the infrastructure itself. We, we talked about the XA9680 and the flexibility that was built into the design principles. That standardizes a lot for us in the validated design process, right? And so if you know a bunch of your infrastructure components are going to be regular and standard, the work, the incremental work is really the software integrations and how does that how does that all play out? And so that enables us to scale yeah. to a few more I, permutations than we ordinarily would have. I love it. Uh, I mean, what, what you're saying is yeah. basically horizontal platform right. that then enables us to um, you know, be able to really be flexible and agile with responding. That's, that's, that's so, so true. It's huge. I'm going to take this conversation a slightly different direction. We have two very important members of your family watching our broadcast <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'd love to say hello to your wife and son. Hi, Armand. Hi, Natasha. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm curious. We've really made it a family affair on the show today, which is warming my heart, frankly. What is your conversations about AI like with the fam, with Natasha and Armand? Um, it's amazing, actually. It's unbelievable. Um, I'm a very impatient dad, and when it comes to doing lessons with my son, my wife often has to be like, no, no, you shouldn't do this. We have like this, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, but actually AI, some of, the, some of the capabilities in AI are just so unbelievable in terms of uh, being able to, uh, you know, one, one thing we were struggling with the other day was fractions, right? Improper fractions versus proper fractions. What's the difference? You know, AI, uh, LLM model is able to make a story for my son, he's 11 years old, about, you know, w w what's an improper fraction? And then able to actually do a test so that he, they can measure his uh, thing. And, and you know, we all know this, kids are, are digitally native. The way that they, they take it in directions that you cannot even, you know, you're, you're just, we're limited by our imagination, they're not. So, I mean. The creativity that we have around the dinner table is all about image generation. Oh, yes. Like, what is the most creative picture you can create? I think the favorite one that we've come up with, we have a pet gecko. Right? Oh. I want to see a, a picture of a gecko on the monkey bars on the playground. Oh my God. Right? And I got to try that. That's amazing. Super creative. <laughs> oh, the image generation is good. David, so let's give good. you a chance to shout out to the fam. Uh -huh. Who's watching at home? Uh, my son Daniel, probably. <laughs> <laughs> very, very jealous that he can't go see the Alienware station down there. Down there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it does look really cool over there, too, all the lights and stuff. It's very awesome. I brought it up earlier, but have you seen the Sal Khan demo? With his kids? Oh, yes, yes. That, that's actually Conmigo. how, yeah. that's unbelievable. That's actually how uh, we came up with, 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 that was the inspiration for like doing this with my son. Yeah, I, I love it, it's unbelievable. Really incredible, so. Yeah. Well, we look forward to having both of your sons hopefully on the show with us sometime. <laughs> very cool. Varun, David, thank you so much for being thanks here for with having us. us. Thanks, this has been a it. really wonderful conversation. Very exciting. Congratulations on everything that's thank going you. on. And shout out to both of your families at home. Dave, thank you for a fantastic day. This has just been a 10. Right. And thank all of you fabulous individuals, wherever you might be on this beautiful planet. We're here in Las Vegas, Nevada. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.